Alright, as you roll in, dude. Cheers, Chris, thank you. Um, just remember to stand on the left when the screen comes. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that last time. time. Sorry, man. Thanks, Chris. Oh, this will be scoops early this week. Hello? Hi, Adam. It's Kayfabe News. It's Flipping Marks here. Remember to subscribe. I got your number from Lewis Scoops. Yeah, I know who you are, Mark. You're that guy from Kayfabe News. What are you calling me for? Have you got a story? Wait, is this about my cat? Well, no matter what happens at that WWE pay-per-view, what's it called? Payback Backlash Backpack. Backpack. WWE Backpack. I can guarantee you that Michael Cole will say something historic has gone down this evening. Now, technically, he is correct because that's just the nature of time. Everything is historic, even what I'm doing now. But it still seems somewhat hyperbolic. Yeah, thanks, mate. I appreciate that. But that's not, strictly speaking, actually a... Oh, he's gone. He's gone. That's good. Yep, don't say bye or anything like that. That's normal. Perfectly normal. Great. Do it myself, shall I? Hello there, everybody. What Culture Wrestling's Adam Clear here, and welcome back to our most bankable source of pre pay per view hits. You're right, this is a nice new jacket. Last minute rumours. Class of Champions this weekend, which is the WWE pay per view, which has the unique gimmick of every single title must be defended. So we've got the Universal Championship, the WWE Championship, the Raw Women's Championship, the SmackDown Women's Championship, the Raw Tag Team Championship, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship, the Intercontinental Championship, the United States Championship, the European Championship, the 24 7 Championship, the NXT UK Women's Championship, the was that other one? The million dollar, ch I don't know, everything. Everything's on the line. And because they have a million championships, that means they're gonna have to have a million matches, which means there are a million possibilities for interesting things that could happen. And as you know well by now, the Internet's Cup, it runneth over with ideas and speculation and rumor and tattletale and gossip and all of that stuff. So I quite neatly compacted it all into one easily digestible video for you to swallow whole with a glass of water. So without any further ado, because it is Friday afternoon and I am gagging for a pint, my name is Adam Cleary. This is the Wrestling Rumors Advisory Board and these are all the last minute WWE Clash of Champions rumors you need to know. Number eight, Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode win the tag titles. Look, I remembered to move, I remembered to move over. Yeah, one thing that kind of came out of nowhere lately was this emergence of Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler as a unlikely tag team. Two men who kind of struggled in the singles market as of late were just thrown together for the big number one contenders match and then lo and behold they actually won. It later transpired that was because Paul Heyman really likes Bobby Roode and wanted to give him something to do other than just getting beat. Even weirder still though was the fact that they just jumped straight to the front of the queue for the Raw tag team titles and won that match on their first time out and got this match against Rollins and Strowman at this pay-per-view which is even weirder still when you think that they probably almost definitely have to lose that match so whoever wins the number one contenders match probably wins the tag titles it was all a bit just out of nowhere and thus all the talk backstage they are still committed to this plan and thus it will be Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler walking away with the tag titles even though they haven't really got a tag team name yet did they or have I missed that I liked Rudolph personally but I can't see them going with that. Anyway, how they actually win these titles, we will get to in a hot minute. Not if Seth burns them down first, am I right, guys? Two blokes just thrown together winning the tag titles. <laughs> like that, I never oh. It should have been an actual tag team. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, the Braun Strowman heel turn. Yeah, so about that tag team title change, at some point in the evening, Seth Rollins will face Braun Strowman for the WWE Universal Championship. And as that stands right now, that is a sporting contest between two men with a great mutual respect for each other. Both are faces on Monday Night Raw. And we're just gonna get this, this little contest between the two of them to see who is truly deserving of being the top dog. It's nuanced, it's, it's clever, it's smart. It gives the audience a lot of credit. But of course, WWE don't do nuance and they don't do clever and they don't do giving the audience a lot of credit. What they like to do is take a story and just chew it up themselves and then dribble it back down your mouth after after they've made it all go warm and mushy. So what they're gonna do here is turn one of these two men heel because you can't be trusted to invest in a match if you don't know there's a baddie and you don't know who's a goodie. And I just mean, look at the pair of them. Who do you think will be the baddie here? Thus, all conventional WWE booking logic says that Strowman will just beat Rollins to a pulp after the match because he blames him 
for the loss. And you'll sit there and you'll be like, oh no, I support Seth Rollins now because he's all hurty because the big man threw him around, so I'm going to cheer for him. And do you know what? I'm so disappointed in that Braun Strowman character for being such a bad loser. I'm going to boo him now as well. That's not going to happen at all. And it's a massive shame because face Strowman is one of the best things on Monday Night Raw. So there you go. Chuck it all away for one match. Not if Seth burns them down first. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Ah, who cares? All I care about is who's gonna go do it to <laughs> Strowman would have to nonce Pharaoh to look like a bigger dickhead than <laughs> Seth Rollins. Number six, Bray Wyatt interferes in the main event. <sighs> right, I've said my piece on this, but it's still way, 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 way too soon to be putting the fiend into the universal title picture because right now you've got a you've got a face champion who should be embarking upon a run of critically acclaimed and varied matches and you've also got lightning in a bottle with Bray Wyatt's return so you put them together when they both feel like they need freshening up because that's an unlikely matchup why would this creature be interested in the title but Rollins has beaten everybody else that is when you put them together maybe next year's Wrestlemania is when you do it, not the first available opportunity. But anyway, I'm absolutely sick of talking about it. We know, or we're led to believe anyway, that we're getting Bray Wyatt challenging the winner of this match at Hell in a Cell. And if the posters for the upcoming house shows between Clash of Champions and Hell in a Cell are anything to go by, and spoiler, they are, that's still going to be Seth Rollins by this point. And of course, as hot as WWE are on this character, they're unlikely to throw him into some random number one contendership match because that just kind of dim his aura a little bit if he's just got to kind of work his way through regular other wrestlers. So you have him appear in this match. You have to give him a reason to challenge Rollins beyond simply, hey, it's my turn. And not to turn this video into just a big list of things I think will happen, but try this on for size. Rollins and Strowman lose the tag team titles, then Strowman blames Rollins and beats him up for it, and Rollins comes down all wounded, being this limping underdog babyface, and then Strowman toys with him and throws him around. It looks for all the world that he's going to win, and then The Fiend appears and saves Rollins, but the match gets thrown out in the process, and The Fiend says some spooky gibberish like, your soul and your title are now forfeit to me, and then challenges him at Hell in a Cell, and that's how you get, that's how you get from point A to point C via point meh. Not saying that's definitely gonna happen, but um, you can at me on Monday morning if it doesn't. Not if Seth burns him down <laughs> first, am I right, guys? If it doesn't work, smash it with a hammer, which was apparently Triple H's strategy throughout the reign of terror. Maybe instead of using the hurt glove, he could use the heel glove and make it so that Seth Rollins isn't a massive dork. <laughs> Number five, Sasha Banks wins. Yeah, they sort of boot themselves into a corner with this one, haven't they? Because finally, 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 after Natalia and Lacey Evans, my God, I rolls to death, Becky Lynch finally gets a challenger who feels worthy of her and the Raw Women's Champion. Someone who is on her level and gives us a spectacle match that can prove without a shadow of a doubt that she is the best in the company now that Ronda has left. And then conversely, on the other side, Sasha Banks' return has been so hot that you can't really have her lose her first big match back. But A and B cannot both be true come Monday morning. Either Lynch's reign is going to end with her first major test, meaning it was all a complete waste of time, or Banks' heat upon her return is just going to into steam the first time she gets a challenge. So one of these two is going to be at a crossroads with their booking after this, because where do they go? Where do they go? So you got to pick one of them, haven't you? And WWE absolutely mwah, 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 loves its short-term thinking and even shorter-term booking. So Bank seeming like the hotter commodity at the moment, you would expect her to go on to win. Plus, and I hate, 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 hate making these rumor videos about booking odds, but of all the matches that are very close in the odds, this one is the most variable. Some places say Banks, some places say Lynch, which means that whoever is the insider for these companies is being non-committal on the result. Ergo, the conversation is being had. Not if Becky burns her down first, <laughs> am I right, guys? <laughs> oh, I miss you. Ha, no, I don't. Smash her face in, <laughs> Sasha. <sighs> Sasha shouldn't win for crying out loud. Do you get it? I don't get it yet, because she cried. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, Becky challenges Stephanie McMahon. This one's just sort of come out of nowhere the last few days. The suggestion that if Becky Lynch loses the Raw Women's Championship, then she will go on to challenge 
Stephanie McMahon, which does simultaneously make a mockery of me just saying, oh, I wonder where the loser of this match could possibly go, but also at the same time, absolutely confirm that there is nowhere really for the loser of this match to go. But the thing is, it's not as ridiculous as it might sound or seem or look or everything about your soul tells you that it is because Becky Lynch has challenged Stephanie McMahon on a number of occasions over the last year. She constantly calls her out on social media whenever they've done things in the ring ahead of WrestleMania. She has always made a point of saying that she wants to fight her, including literally this week with this tweet. Any more torts on fighting me in front of lots of people? That's not my best accent, admittedly. There was even a pointed little jab at the authority during a promo on Monday Night Raw this week. She was talking about how everything that Sasha Banks has going for her, every advantage she's had in her career, she should be the one that's made history and changed the game. But no, it's actually Lynch. And then she kind of went after the company a bit. She was saying that you were handed main events and pay-per-view matches while I couldn't get on TV. And this company, this company even gave you bouquets of flowers after your matches. That does kind of feel that her problem isn't with banks, but it's with, dare I say it, the authority. So given that nobody would really want another rematch out of all this, because rematches are so boring, and if you lose your title, you should go to the back of the queue. What if, what if, what if, just what if, right? What if Becky Lynch decides to fix the problem as a whole rather than the problem in front of her. What if she goes after the company? What if she goes after Steph? Yeah, all right, I can't see it either, but you never know. Now that's what I'm talking about when I say burn it down. <laughs> Putting stuff out on Twitter, they'll get you into trouble with the higher ups. Now that's your boyfriend about that first. <laughs> <laughs> Big match, huge. I can see the tagline right now. It's the man versus the unbearable c <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Brian is the mastermind behind Rowan. Is anybody is anybody actually, anybody actually buying this one? Are they a man who WWE have never, ever, 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 ever been convinced on as a single star because he was just in a cult, then he left the cult, and he went back to the cult, and he left the cult, and he went back to the cult, and he left the cult, and he started a tag team with the guy he was in the cult with, and then he left that, disappeared for ages, then came back as just the muscle in someone else's main event run. Not a singles push, that is it. For this to genuinely be the start of a big Eric Rowan run on the main roster, he would have to go over both Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan in a way in this story, which is basically the equivalent of Mason Ryan turning his back on CM Punk in 2011, then beating him and John Cena on his way to an Intercontinental title run. That's... That's what this is shaping up to be. The biggest tell of all of this is that they are still leaving all the money on the table for a Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan match at a big pay-per-view. Hell, maybe even a match at Hell in a Cell, for example. And the only way you can generate the necessary heat required to rekindle this whole disastrous, oh my God, who pushed the box over storyline they've been doing is if there is a further level of betrayal. And it actually turns out that Daniel Bryan is the mastermind behind all of this. And he's just going to deck Roman. Sorry, sorry, what's that? What's that? Oh, they've made it a no disqualification match, so literally anybody else could get involved if they wanted to. Well, wow, wonder what's gonna happen there. But that'd just be fickle! He hates lying! Fickle! This is my surprised face. <laughs> Daniel, did he smoke the prototype to that storyline? <laughs> Number two, or Rowan just actually wins. I mean, it is kind of worth pointing out. The other side of this is that it's all to be taken at face value, and he has genuinely turned his back on Daniel Bryan, and they are genuinely about to push him into a singles run, and in order to do that, he would have to beat Roman Reigns, because otherwise you'd just kill it on launch. And to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, the reason a lot of people are speculating this might happen is because, really, like with everything that's happened with this storyline, with the doppelganger, and then with Buddy Murphy, and then with everything else, would this, would this genuinely be the weirdest part of this whole angle? Would it even be in the top five? No. But it's Roman, you splutter! The guy came back from the, old, the horribleness and then has won pretty much consistently ever since he's come back. He's not going to get buried at the hands of Eric Rowan, but to you I say, how else do you do it? You've not ever made Eric Rowan feel like a viable single star or even a viable part of his own storyline here. So how else do you get him over than a just huge, big upset victory? And this would be a huge, big... This would be the big, huge upset victory of the year. Surely, how else do you do it if not like that? Answers on a postcard. And I will just say, again, I hate mentioning betting odds and all this, but one or two places 
seem to think this is what's going down. Not everywhere, and everywhere that doesn't seems to think it's really strongly the other way, but one or two places think they've heard something, so... Ugh. Eric, ruler of the people. Rowan, a small deciduous tree of the rose family with compound leaves, white flowers, and red berries. Don't know if that clears it up for anyone. <laughs> That's my favourite one you've ever done. <laughs> oh, twin magic with that bell end from the other week, is it? <laughs> In a great indictment of my sense of humour, I had the exact same <laughs> thing. Yes, Adam Wilborn. <laughs> Number one, the WWE Championship match gets thrown out. There is no way on God's green earth that the Kofi Kingston, Randy Orton storyline is ending at Clash of Champions. There is no way in this putrid, collapsing, dying cesspit we call a home that this match is anything other than a catastrophic. I mean, do you honestly think, right, after everything, everything this feud's been so far, everything they've mentioned, everything that's gone on, that we just get a singles match, a one-on-one -on -one match, in which the best wrestler wins, and then they move on with the belt, and the other person moves on to another storyline. Is that what you think? Is that what you think, you idiot? And credit where it's due to WWE, they are no longer giving us rematches for the sake of giving us rematches, or at least they're trying not to. Anyway, but still, whatever would follow this match would just be a rematch of this match if it's got the same two guys in it so the only way you make the rematch of this match not feel like a rematch of this match is if you never actually have the match to rematch in the first place match and given what an absolute mess this always ends up being with the new day and rkftrkwtfrkotf then there's every chance they could just have a big well, they said gangbang there but a big old fight couldn't they it's, it's gonna happen isn't it? We know that the Revival are going to end up in this match, and we know that New Day are going to end up in this match, even though they're wrestling each other earlier on the card. So just have the whole thing just degenerate into a DQ finish, throw it out, and then put them in Hell in a Cell where nobody can interfere. That's, that's the logical way you book this. And as I've always said, hashtag, it's really easy to book WWE. Not if Seth burns them down first. <laughs> oh my god. god. Kofi Kingston, you're making me watch another match against Randy Orton. Come on! Spelled C-U-N. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. And do it after a few minutes because a Randy Orton match takes longer than Jerry Lawler does to get hard for a 30-year-old woman. <laughs> so when I said you weren't going to go big... <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, they have it. Those are all the rumours doing the rounds on the internet that I either read or somebody sent to me and I put down in an article which you can read on whatculture.com right now, then convert it into this handy little script read out in front of this camera for you to enjoy with both your eyes and your ears and whatever other orifices you press against the screen. Why? Because it's my job, isn't it? No idea how I ended up here. Cards your dealt, I suppose. Let us know what you made of it all in the comments below as well as any of your own. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Please join, I think, Will Bourne and Phil for the live stream on Sunday. We will be showing all the reactions to Clash of Champions as it happens. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I know, I know it's a really nice jacket. No need to remind me, although do feel free to tweet me with it if you like. I've been Adam Cleary and I'll see you soon. I always am Adam Cleary. I always see you soon. Bye.